Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome back to your fairly usual dose of the battle mechs of Battletech. Having finally introduced the class of giants known as the Super Heavies, and actually having talked about two of them in the form of the Omega and the Poseidon, today we will learn about a third one. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you the mighty Ares. Since today we're gonna talk about just one of these, and the Super Heavies don't exactly have a huge amount of lore behind them, Today's video might also end up being a bit shorter. My apologies for that. Either way, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Some stats on this guy include... It weighs 135 tons and has a top speed of 32 km an hour. The Ares is a super heavy class tripod Omnimac which was first produced by the Republic of the Sphere. Produced in secret, as part of the Republic's Rhodes project, the Ares was based on development of the Poseidon Super Heavy Tripod. It was conceived as an Omnimech, to allow it to be easier for the maintenance crews to service it, and allow it to transport battle armor support elements. This mech's development began as the Poseidon prototypes finished their trial run in 3135. Ares tripods have been deployed to all of the Stone's Brigade regiments, with a decidedly higher number appearing in the Lament and the Defenders of Terra. Outside of them, a company of the machines was also posted at the Devil's Rock factories where they are assembled, augmenting the planetary defenses that already include the 15th Hastati regiments. This, of course, is only prudent. As Devil's Rock stands at the very edge of the fortress, one jump away from Clan Wolf, it will surely be caught in the first wave of any clan invasion of the Republic. Because of this, frantic efforts continue to duplicate the production of both the Ares and the Poseidon tripods on Mars and in the Terran system. It is hoped that these factories will come online by the end of the decade. In the meantime, the Devil's Rock factories and their power centers have been rigged by powerful demolition charges that the base commanders can activate in the event of an imminent capture. Meanwhile, covert reconnaissance and raiding continues throughout the area, mainly to keep an eye on the activities of the Republic neighbors, but also to preemptively disrupt any potential attacks against the Republic in general, and the Devil's Rock specifically. Designed as a tripod, the mech's unique method of movement allows the Ares the ability to handle turns without having to slow its pace. That is a benefit to the design due to its already slow speed. Its lower-rated engine and endocomposite construction allows the mech to carry 41 tons of Omnipod-encased weapons and equipment. The mech is protected by 28.5 tons of Maximilian 320 standard armor, giving it hefty protection against enemy fire. Like other super-heavy tripods, including the Poseidon, the Ares has a three-man cockpit, allowing the mech to perform better in combat than a normal single mech warrior. This allows it to be able to target multiple enemies without penalty, a pilot focused on navigating the machine and gaining a tactical advantage to allow it to serve as a command vehicle in battle. Each Ares carries a fixed array of weapons. On each leg, a pair of anti-personnel pods, a clan ER small laser and an SRM-2 launcher. On the mech torso, each version of the Ares has a pair of Clan ER medium lasers and a pair of LRM-5 launchers, giving the Ares series of mechs a well-rounded base platform to begin with. Each of the versions of the Ares carries a named weapons load for each Omni configuration. Republican pilots of the Ares have undertaken the practice of naming the Ares configurations, which helped confuse enemies encountering them. The primary configuration, known as the Zeus, is what you would call a general-purpose combatant. Along its fixed weapon systems, the Zeus has a pair of Clantech ERPPCs in the left arm, while three additional Clan Streak SRM-6s are fitted to the right arm. The four tons of missiles are protected by the addition of Case 2. With the addition of 11 double heatsinks, a targeting computer is used to enhance accuracy. The other variants of this giant include 
the Coronas. The first of all the Ares class tripods ever made, the Coronas has all the hallmarks of a prototype. High stress testing on its mobility systems have given the machine a curious limp that slows it to a crawl, especially on uneven or rough terrain. Meanwhile, its slightly outmoded configuration software has been repeatedly patched throughout its trials, causing occasional sensor ghosts. Also, to the outrage of its crew, periodic confusion over the mech's non-fixed payload. The engine has a slow coolant leak the techs have never been able to pin down, while the right arm actuators and servos make a horrific shriek when elevated more than 30 degrees above the horizon. Finally, the damage from many live fire testing against the machine have created a hull that can only support 90% of the rated armor across the torso. To address all of these problems, the engineers at Rhodes Foundry have estimated that the Cronus would need to be almost completely disassembled, with its core chassis, the engine and the cockpit module replaced in their entirety. To date, however, the RAF has considered this option as an extravagance, and they are unwilling to endure it while the factories work to pump out perfected Ares as fast as possible. The ARS V1A this configuration, codenamed the Hera, is noted for the right arm mounted improved heavy Gauss rifle, with 6 tons of ammo in the neighboring side torso. Three additional clan ER medium lasers are mounted in the left arm. The right arm is fitted with a case 2 to prevent a weapon explosion from taking out the entire machine. Seven additional double heatsinks are fitted as well. The ARS V1B the B configuration is codenamed the Hades, and it is a heavy missile configuration. Designed to engage in intermediate combat ranges, the Hades has a pair of Apollo FCS guided 22 of the medium range missile launchers, one in each arm. In addition to the missiles, the Hades also has a clan grade ultra class 10 autocannon in the left arm and a TSCMP in the right. Its ammunition is stored in the arms where their parent weapons are located, each one having case 2 for added protection. Two additional double heatsinks are present to help cope with the weapon heat. The ARS V1C This one is known as the Aphrodite. It is configured to serve as a command unit for a C3 network. Its most notable feature is its two C3 master computers and its Angel ECM. Its weaponry includes three Clan LRM-5 launchers and a Clan Class 5 rotary autocannon. The two tons of LRM and two tons of autocannon ammo are with their parent weapons and protected by Case 2. Five additional double heatsinks are fitted to the configuration. The ARS V1D the D, or Hephaestus configuration, is a generalist which can act as part of a C3 network. With its own C3 slave unit, the Hephaestus can bring its laser-based arsenal to bear on an opponent with the aid of a network mate. It has a pair of Clan ER Large lasers in the left arm, while the right has a pair of Clan Pulse Large lasers and a single light PPC. With its high burden, the Hephaestus is given an additional 13 double heatsinks. A notable mech warrior associated with the Ares is Knight Colette Drummond. Colette Drummond is a ghost. Even though she commanded one of the very first Ares class super heavy tripods ever deployed, she made it a point to keep the enemy guessing. It was not long after the fortress walls went up that the reports of colossal mechs hit media sites in and around the Republic. In one of the most infamous examples, a raid against a militia base on a former Republic world showed a desert camouflaged Ares, Drummond stomping her way through a spaceport with an Atlas as an escort. Sent out to raid worlds around the Republic, testing her Ares against various rival states while gathering intelligence and helping evacuate stragglers outside the fortress, Drummond took maximum advantage of the Ares modular design. She had crews and techs constantly alter the configuration, and even the color schemes between encounters. These changes were far from random though. Using an internal logic all of her own, 
Drummond developed a detailed backstory for each configuration and color scheme that she used, and tracked all of them in a digital diary to maintain continuity. In this way, she fooled many intelligence services across multiple realms, into believing that there were dozens of these colossals attacking worlds around the Republic, even when their numbers were far, far fewer. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Ares Super Heavy Battle Mech, or tripod, if you will, for today. Are you a fan of these Super Heavy tripod designs? Or would you still prefer a good old-fashioned heavy or assault mech? What do you like or dislike most about the tripods? Feel free to share any opinions, thoughts or experiences you may have had with them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And you can also click the bell notification icon to stay a bit more up to date. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a great and awesome day. This is GDN signing off.